Welcome to Bird Ultrasound Tips and Tricks. I'm going to continue my rolling theme after last month's Rolling Stones with Anisotropy. This month we're going to have a look at rolling nipples. When you perform a breast ultrasound, assessment of the nipple and the retro areola region is a really important component of the scan and it's often an area where pathology can be easily missed. There's a variety of different techniques you can use to assess the nipple and the retro areola area. However, the old Tim Stavros rolled nipple technique I think is superior to all the others and this is what we're going to have a look at in today's presentation. If you look at the anatomy of a breast, you can see there are many of these little terminal ductal lactation units, the so-called TDLUs, and these are connected to an intricate network of ducts which drain the lactation to the nipple. And they all sort of come together and if you look at the lady laying on her back, it's almost like watching a volcano with lava coming up from deep in the earth to the peak of the volcano there. If you scan this nipple in the conventional way where you put the transducer straight on top and you shine the ultrasound beam down through it, you have a real problem. And the problem that you have is that you're looking straight down the length of all of these ducts. If you think about vascular ultrasound, if you think about musculoskeletal ultrasound, we all know that if you're looking at a tubular structure, you're much better off looking at it from the side where your transducer is parallel to the long axis of that tubular structure. And this is indeed true of breast ducts as well. So when you scan from the top of the nipple like this, what you end up with is this very, I think, inadequate image. So I never scan a nipple this way for two reasons. Firstly, I don't think it's particularly comfortable for the lady. And the second reason is that you end up with this image which almost looks like there's some sort of a hypoechoic mass sitting in the retro areola area there and I really feel like if I do imaging like this I'm throwing the poor old radiologist under the bus and it almost looks like there could be a cancer there but of course they're having to report it as normal because they know you're, you're likely going through the nipple and causing that attenuation. Here's another great example where just scanning directly on top of the nipple here just causes a whole lot of shadowing and who really knows if there's a breast cancer sitting in there or not, who can tell? And then if a breast cancer is missed and uh, a mammogram or an ultrasound down the track or an MRI scan subsequently shows a breast cancer just deep to the nipple and these are the images that you've presented for the radiologist, anyone can sort of say, well, you know, that hypoechoic area there, surely that was suspicious to you, but in fact it's just shadowing and attenuation from the normal tissue of the nipple itself. There's a couple of things that you can do to assist you with scanning the tissues immediately deep to the nipple. The first thing is always to use nice warm gel because if you put cold gel on the nipple, the tissues of the nipple will contract a little bit, they become thicker and more attenuative and you're not going to be able to see what's directly underneath the nipple. It's much the same theory I use when I'm scanning a scrotum. If you put cold jelly on a scrotum, then you, the cremister muscle contracts. You get a very thick cremister muscle. A, it's not very pleasant for the patient, and B, it leads to a poor quality ultrasound examination. The second thing is using transducer skills to look at the ducts in a nice parallel manner. So you're coming in from the side of the ducts and you're seeing those tubular structures passing across the screen parallel to the surface of your transducer so that you can assess the internal architecture. I have a few different techniques that I use when I assess a nipple and it really depends on the clinical presentation that the lady comes to me with. So if she presents, for example, with a right upper quadrant mass that she can feel or an area of discomfort in the upper outer quadrant, I'm not going to do a rolled nipple technique because there's really nothing in that clinical presentation that made me worry about the nipple or the retro areola area as a particular area of concern. So I tend to place my transducer just on the side of the nipple and I shine the ultrasound beam through that areola area there underneath the nipple and you can see that you can really get a decent look at the tissue underneath the nipple there you can see the little ducts and you can see there's no mass hiding in there you avoid the problem of the dense acoustic shadow that is produced when you scan directly through the nipple so scanning through the areola and shining the ultrasound beam underneath the nipple I think is a perfectly adequate method if there is a low index of suspicion for nipple pathology Another technique that I see people use, which I don't find particularly helpful myself, is just to put lots and lots of gel on and then plonk the transducer on top of the nipple. It does tend to reduce the amount of acoustic shadowing you get. However, I still feel like it's a bit messy, it's a bit untidy, it's not particularly pleasant for the lady. And I don't think the picture that you get is really a very high quality image either. So, so this technique of the gel loaded technique scanning on top of the nipple, I really don't 
advocate that as being a primary method either. But these are examples where I've used it. And you can see the little ducks under the nipple. It's not too bad. You can see how much gel we've got here in this area uh, sitting on top of the skin of the nipple. And then you can see through that. There's not too much acoustic shadowing, so I don't feel like I'm throwing the radiologist under a bus in this circumstance. You can see the little ducks here. But it's not really as nice a picture as you're going to get scanning through the areola or using a rolled nipple technique. So when do I use the rolled nipple technique? Now the rolled nipple technique was first described by Tom Stavros, the wonderful radiologist from North America, many years ago. And when I look back through my film library, I've been using rolled nipple technique for over a decade myself, and I use it to great advantage. So when do I do it? I don't do it on every breast ultrasound. I might find myself doing it in maybe one in 10 or thereabouts ultrasounds where I use a rolled nipple technique. The other 9 out of 10, I just simply use my areola approach and shine the ultrasound transducer through the areola to see the ducts behind the nipple itself. However, if the lady presents to me with any type of nipple discharge, now the type of nipple discharge that is concerning is if it's, if it's black, if it's brown, if it's red or pink because this indicates some blood product. If, however, it is clear or milky or green in colour, and I know green sounds a bit odd, these are less sinister colours for the discharge but all ladies that have some sort of nipple discharge as a presenting clinical feature will be assessed by me with a rolled nipple technique. If there's a palpable lump in the area of the nipple or the areola then they're going to have a rolled nipple technique if there's any skin changes around the nipple, nipple or areola and this might include visible skin changes but also sensory skin changes like itchiness or sensitivity etc these ladies are all going to have a rolled nipple technique and of course if we see something on the mammogram where we can see a mass or some calcifications immediately deep to the nipple then a rolled nipple technique is perfect for these ladies as well so how do we roll a nipple well we don't use a steamroller and we don't do this so that's not really how to roll a nipple the technique however is fairly straightforward it's a bi-manual technique, so I always have a bit of a joke with my lady as I'm scanning her that I need a third hand because I end up with gel on both of my hands and I make sure I've got a little towel sitting on my lap or just drape over my patient that I can very easily access to clean the jelly off my left hand so I can then go back and annotate and fix my TGC or gain or whatever I have to do retrospectively after I've frozen the image. So I bring the transducer in on the side of the nipple like this and then I place my finger on the opposite side and I place my finger typically at about the edge of the areola or slightly even further out than that so you're just off the areola. And then what I do is I push with the transducer in this direction and I push with my finger down into the breast and towards the transducer. So I'm really rolling the transducer on top of my finger and at the same time I'm rolling the nipple on its side and the resultant anatomy that you end up with brings the transducer sort of parallel to the ducts like this but in actual fact once you've pushed into the breast and performed this maneuver the breast is actually not really in this orientation it's really looking more like this with the transducer coming down on top of the rolled nipple my finger sitting underneath it and have a look at the image that you get now you can see that you're beautifully parallel to all of these ducts and if there's a little papilloma or something living in one of these ducts here you really get a great chance to view it and you get superb image quality. So this is me doing some rolled nipple technique images. My finger is actually down off the bottom of the screen here. So my finger will be down in here somewhere. You can see how beautifully you can see the ducts tracking through. This is the head of the nipple here. And these are the ducts that are now parallel to the ultrasound beam. The other thing you'll notice is that at the end of this video you can see there's a little bit of black screen and that's because I have to take my finger and the transducer off and then I have to quickly go for the freeze button and when I take the clip you can see that that's the time it takes me to freeze the image there. I'll show you a few more examples and these are all just normal breasts that I'm doing a rolled nipple technique on. Again the head of the nipple is now here, there's the ducts coming through, my finger is down here somewhere, transducer on the top, you can see I'm using quite light pressure because you've got a little bit of gel here sitting adjacent between the nipple and the areola, but have a look at the detail you can see the ducts and you can track them right back into the breast here. If there's a little papilloma or even worse a little breast cancer sitting in these ducts sitting here, you're going to see it really accurately with the ultrasound. So it's a very simple technique. I'm a male sonographer doing a lot of breast ultrasounds, so I'm fairly defensive about how I 
conduct myself. And so what I do with these ladies is I explain to them that we're going to do this Tom Stavros rolled nipple technique. The reason I'm doing it is because, for example, you've had a discharge from the nipple, etc. I actually turn the screen towards the lady so that she can see the screen. And I write on the screen, I annotate rolled nipple or rolled nipple technique. And that makes it very clear to the lady that I'm documenting something that is a, a genuine technique. It's well established and I've explained the benefits of it to her. I also involve her in the examination by turning the screen so that and I point to, to, to her ducks and I say you can see all the ducks laying down here you can see there's nothing in them or if there is a little something in them you can say this is what we've been looking for there's a small little bit of soft tissue growth inside this duct and that's what is likely the cause of your discharge from the nipple etc so I very much involve my ladies in the examination and I think by annotating and involving the lady, I think really it's a, it's a really well accepted technique. You can see it's interesting. Breasts are sort of lactating units all the time, and you you think of lactation when you when you have uh, you know breast milk being produced for your, for your young little munchkin. But you can see here inside this duct, you can see quite a lot of fluid sort of sloughing about back and forwards here as we do this rolled nipple technique. And this is just a little bit of natural secretion from the breast, and probably explains why the ladies had a little bit of clear or milky coloured discharge that might be appearing on her bra at the end of the day. And that's likely why she presented to me in the first place. So these are images that you're going to see with patients where we've found something that we're interested in. Now, in this case, you can see there's a couple of little soft tissue areas. There's one here and there's another one just down here sitting inside this duct. And this could be a little papilloma, but it could also just be a little bit of debris sitting inside the duct. Now, how can we tell? Well, what we do is we use some colour Doppler algorithm. And in this instance here I've been lucky enough to have superb microvascular imaging so that's SMI and this is a super sensitive low flow algorithm for looking for flow inside tissue so if my question is is there flow inside that bit of tissue then SMI is the tool that I will use and you can see in this case the answer from SMI is no there's no red blood cells moving around in there and this is a little bit of impassated secretion here just a bit of debris sitting inside the duct and nothing to worry about. If you have a look at this one though, you can see it looks very similar. It looks like there's a little bit of debris sitting inside the duct, but in this case we've used advanced dynamic flow and you can see this is fairly highly vascularized piece of soft tissue. So this is in fact a little papilloma and it's I guess fortunate for us that papillomas are quite vascular. So if it's a bit of secretion, there'll be no vascularity. If it's a papilloma, they're typically very vascularized. And these papillomas, while they may be benign, they in Australia at least, they all get removed because some of them do go on to develop malignant potential. So they'll be extracted from the breast with a surgical procedure. Here's a really nice example of a rolled nipple technique and you can see when you come back into this duct there is this soft tissue mass growing inside the duct here. You ask yourself then are you a papilloma or are you a piece of debris? You put the SMI on it, it's highly vascularized. This is a little papilloma and you've made your diagnosis. And good luck trying to find this without a rolled nipple technique. The rolled nipple technique will give you such a superior image. And it's beautiful the way that you can see, a bit like a nerve sheath tumor, you can see the normal nerve, in this case the normal duct tracking to it, like a little rat's tail, and then the, it expands into the mass and then it continues out the other side of it. So you can really see the continuity of this papilloma with the duct. And that really makes you very certain of the diagnosis. This is another little small papilloma. So again, you can see the way I've laid the duct down flat here, and then you can see the flow in it with the SMI. This is an older image, but uh, on a slightly older machine, but you can see again with a rolled nipple technique, you can see, and this is, it demonstrates, I guess, how long I've been doing rolled nipple techniques. So I can tell you this image was taken in 2015, so a very, very long time ago, uh, using colour Doppler, and you can see this almost heart-shaped, actually, papilloma here. And then you can see the vascularity inside it here, and it makes a diagnosis of a papilloma very easy. And so from 2015 to 2024, this is a lady that I scanned only about a week ago. She had a discharge from her nipple that was pink in colour. Uh, so it indicates some sort of blood product. I do a rolled nipple technique. I can see beautifully that duct extending from the apex of the nipple back into the breast parenchyma. And you can see there's a soft tissue mass growing inside it. Then when we assess that mass to see if it has vascularity, we can see that in fact with SMI it does have vascularity. So it's not a bit of debris, it is a papilloma. We have the diagnosis now, we have the answer for a discharge. She can go off to the breast surgeon, have a consult and work out some management. 
This is a lady that presented with some calcifications, almost little DCIS type calcifications just in the retro areola area. So the radiologist asked me to have a look behind the nipple to see if A, I could find the calcifications and B, if I could see any mass lesion arising from them. Now using a rolled nipple technique, you can see lots of little calcifications there lined out in the ducts. So there's lots of little tiny calcifications, but there's no mass lesion, which is a good finding for this lady. So while there are some calcifications, there's no mass developing. And then the nature of those calcifications on the mammogram will then decide on what treatment is offered for this lady. But the rolled nipple technique has really allowed me to lay all those ducts down and have a look for any mass that is developing within any of those ducts. And in this case, it's negative. We can't see any mass. What about with an inverted nipple? Can you roll an inverted nipple? Well, I've never met a nipple yet that I can't roll. Even a very deeply inverted nipple, I can still roll and still get these quite nice pictures. It's a little bit more difficult, but you can certainly do it. If you bring the transducer in the same type of orientation, and with your finger, I just put my finger a bit wider, so you can see I'm sort of well the other side of the areola margin there, so I'm getting a bit more breast tissue. And then as I roll the nipple in the standard way, you end up with this inverted nipple being on its side, and you can still see the ducts just the same. So I feel like a inverted nipple is really not really a disadvantage for me. It's slightly technically more challenging, but I can still get a great image. You might also ask, how many directions do I roll the nipple? Well, the way that I roll the nipple is I roll it first of all towards me, which means if it's a lady's left breast, it's being rolled from lateral to medial, and if it's the lady's right breast, it's being rolled from medial to lateral. And that's just because I can't untangle my hands to do it any other way, so it's just ergonomic for me. Once I've rolled the nipple, then I scan through the nipple very carefully, so through the volume of it, up and down, and I've got quite nice long cine loops on my machine, so then when I freeze it, I can go back through that cine loop and take a series of still images to represent the ducts going through that nipple. And then I roll the nipple 90 degrees to that direction and I always roll it towards the lady's head. So I will basically roll them towards me and then towards the lady's head. And again, I scan through the volume of it and I take a series of pictures through it and that gives me great documentation. It means I'm only having to do two rolls of each nipple and then I'm using my cine loop to go back and, and retrospectively select out my pictures to send through for documentation for my radiologist to view. So that's the technique there for an inverted nipple. So I hope you've enjoyed this short presentation on rolled nipple technique with breast ultrasound. Please keep improving your breast ultrasound technique and keep providing that wonderful service to the female population in your local area. If you enjoyed this presentation, please visit birdultrasound.com.au where you'll find a two-part comprehensive breast series of webinars as well as webinars on just about every ultrasound topic you can imagine. Also, please feel free to email me anytime at stayintouch at birdultrasound.com.au. Happy scanning and bye for now.